Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is Laminate Sample 41. It's a super light e-glass panel on Nomex Core. The skins are only 70 gram and the core is 3 millimeter 48 I think kilo Nomex. Here's the glass. It's very light, plain weave and the core. This is just a off cut of Nomex I found and the thing with honeycomb is it's made of ribbons glued together and then expanded. So there's a ribbon direction, which is the direction the ribbon runs, the, the strips run like this. You can grab them and unzip the Nomex along those ribbons. And the mechanical properties are very different between the ribbon or L direction and the other direction, which is called W. We'll look at that a little later on. So to lay this up, because this cloth is really, really light and hard to handle, I am going to wet it out between two sheets of scrap vacuum bag film. And so I have it on the film, and this piece of film was folded, which is not ideal. Ideally, you'd have something on a roll. You can use painter's plastic for this. Um, I just used this because I had it. So you wet out one side and then fold the film or place a second sheet on top. And with a clean squeegee, that has got no sharp edges on it. You work the resin into the fiber and the air out from between. And any excess resin, you can see it forming a little ridge of excess res resin along the edge there. So what you're getting is pretty much an ideal amount of resin in the cloth and no trapped air. It's kind of like a wet out machine or a fabric impregnator, but manual. So you end up with a pretty ideal resin ratio. And in this case, we don't want any excess resin getting sucked down into the Nomex cells. So I trim these out. You can see laminate sample 15 for more about this. And here they are, just very thin glass between those two layers of vacuum bag film. So I'm gonna lay this up on this table has some Teflon on it. Sometimes it's hard to pull the plastic off, but got it off one side, leave it on the other side. So I'm actually just touching plastic here, not the laminate, especially with this really thin glass, which you can mess up so easily. And then I grab the squeegee again and work out all the air with that plastic layer still on top. And this is a nice way to make sure that you have a good surface finish, even when you don't have that much resin. So peeling the plastic off here, it's kind of a hassle. It's easy to catch the edge if the glass isn't perfectly square. Sometimes one way works better than the other. And so there's the, the glass, and I'm going to put the honeycomb right down on top. Normally you'd wet out the honeycomb, but here I'm trying to be really light, and so I didn't bother rolling a light layer of resin onto the honeycomb. It's very light honeycomb. Hopefully it'll be fine. So putting some foam strips around the perimeter because when the bag comes down, it'll crush the edges of the honeycomb. It's more of an issue with thicker honeycomb, but it's a good practice and it makes demolding the panel a lot easier because that foam is tougher than the honeycomb. It's easy to rip the skins right off. So putting down the top ply of glass here with the plastic on top and it's gonna be pretty hard to make sure it's stuck down. There's not that much surface area on the top of the Nomex, so it doesn't really want to stay stuck to those the edges of the cells. But I got it there and almost messed it up with this perforated release film. You can see how delicate that 70 gram two ounce glass is. And here I'm not using any peel ply because peel ply sucks up the resin. I could pre-wet peel ply using the same method and apply it the way you would say pre-preg peel ply. But I don't need peel ply and I want the surface to be easy to see through. And for breather, I'm using some off cuts of that very thin glass. So hopefully that will not absorb much resin out of that top ply using as thin a, a, well, it's a breather and a bleeder. But in terms of its bleeding properties, I'm using it as little material as possible. So hopefully it'll not absorb that much resin. So I came back, you can see how much bled through there, a little more than would be ideal. 
there are ways to manage this, but I don't think it's too much of a problem here. Demolding this sheet, you can see how it's nice to have those foam edges. And it pops up really well off the Teflon, and the back looks really good. To trim it up, I used a razor knife, and this is a square of G10 that I use for these laminate samples to make them all the same. It's one square foot, about 300 millimeters on a side. And went around and razor knifed everything. It cuts beautifully with a razor knife, and it's really very lightweight. Panel here is 44 grams, or 1.5 ounces, for this one square foot, which is really light. We'll look back at that Nomex a bit more to get a sense of the two different directions and their properties. That's the direction in which it was expanded. And to look at this and do some very crude measurements, you've got this extremely rough bend tester, which is not something that is all that good for real engineering, but it serves to illustrate things without making anyone confident in the results. So here in the L direction, it's got one and a half pounds of weight on there. Finally tapping the table, I made it crack. That's the ribbon direction where it is the stiffest and strongest. This is the W direction. These are the same width strips. So with half a pound, it bends a lot more than the other one did. When I put a pound on there, pretty much breaks right away without any tapping or thumping. So in the W direction, it's way less strong. And that makes sense because the strips, there, there are no actual honeycomb cell edges running in that direction. Everything is at a 45. And so it's less stiff and it's less resistant to shear. Looking up close, you can see that core. It's pretty nicely bonded. I estimate there's about 50 grams of resin per skin. And in some cases, the glass broke. Not a lot of honeycomb coming away on the glass, but that may be more that the glass isn't strong enough to really do it. But definitely pushing it on the resin weight here. Having a look at the finished panel. There's some variability in the amount of resin and what looks like little bubbles of resin on the honeycomb cells. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm sure there is excess resin here or resin that should have stayed in the panel. The mold side surface looks really good. There are a few very light pinholes in it, but it's pretty, pretty decent given how little resin and little fiber there is there. And stiffness wise, it's, it's not very beefy, but it's better than you'd imagine it would be given how light it is. And of all the samples, this is so far the lightest by a pretty good margin. I think you could do the same thing with carbon. You know, I did it with glass here because it's cheaper, I had it, and it's a lot easier to see the process with glass. It's a neat look at how to make really light panel without prepreg or ovens or anything all that complicated. Thanks for checking it out. Have a look at some of the other laminate samples and also check out exploreCompositesCom for a whole bunch more practical how-to composites knowledge.